One of the uh, key things to understand psychology and what it's all about is to uh, realize something kind of amazing to, I guess, all of us walking around the streets all the time, because even I don't think about this during, during my actual day when I go to an office and I work. Uh, but the reality that we perceive out here in front of us, even my own hands in this case, um, uh, the chairs in the room, Steve sitting here. Steve happens to be an image in my head. He's, Steve is out there. <laughs> and the image in your head that you carry around of your mother, your sister, your uh, brother, uh, aunts, uncles, they're all what in psychology calls complexes. They're an, uh, an emotions and thoughts and intuitions and feelings around a given person. So the important thing to, that for me is, for all of us to remember when we're discussing psychology is that the world that we're talking about, Steve and I, uh, the world in our heads, your head as well, uh, is not the objective reality out there. What you're doing is you're taking it in uh, from the outside through the, your five senses and uh, you've been, you have those natural, as natural genetic equipment but then the world gets at you and your mother and your father and your school and your college and all the rest of the corporation all make demands on your personality. So uh, that the, the world that um, you perceive is a very personal world. It's been conditioned positively and negatively. And Jung has a major theme about positive and negative. <laughs> well, I think this whole part about the inner subjective reality or the reality of the psyche just means that your your inner subjective experiences are just as real as the outer experiences uh, that you have and i think that's the way that many people connect with jung uh, is through reading about an inner experience that jung had had or jung describes and then you, you put your finger on it and say, well, you know, I, I've had an experience like, like that, too. At least that, that was my experience. Right. That's, that's how I started when I Me too. first read Jung's autobiography. Uh, I read about these experiences, inner experiences that a person had that I wasn't sure other people ever even had those experiences. And so, lo and behold, come to find out uh, the most intensely personal and subjective can sometimes be also the most universally human experience. Yes. So it's on the inside. And uh, the, a key, a key element in all of that inner experience. Um, we're talking about your fears, your hopes, desires, your dreams, hopes, dreams, fantasies, everything. <laughs> all those inner experiences, as well as physical needs um, are uh, deeply personal and uh, that is what psychology comes to interpret and uh, to study how we do how we do that interpretation and how do you change that interpretation so that you can adapt to the world which has already made demands on you in adapting um, the uh, Outer, our outer world is sort of like a western trail of, from the Roman Empire, the Roman emperors, the church, the Middle Ages, higher authorities telling you who you are, etc. And uh, your inner experience is equal, if not more important. Well, except that we live in a culture that values our outer authority more, more than Absolutely. inner authority, right. so that uh, people find it difficult to really make claims based on some kind of, of inner authority, whether it's a gut feeling that you have, or whether it's a dream that you have, or whether it's something that's intensely meaningful to you. Uh, this whole outer and inner problem gets really complicated. Yes, it does. But I think part of what happens with maturity, or part of being mature, is more and more that inner voice becomes something that you listen to. Right. Now we'll talk about the structure of personality. Um, uh, that's another foreign term to most people. But uh, starting with Freud, we all know the term ego. Uh, ego, centricity, we hear all this stuff thrown around in our daily lives, all over the place on media, 
television films. Uh, it's probably a universally known term that you have an ego. A person has an ego. That doesn't mean you have a fat head, as Steve just <laughs> reminded me. <laughs> uh, what the ego is, the ego is the individual, your own, my own, Steve's own, uh, center of conscious awareness. And uh, it's the internal I. When you talk about I, or when you talk about me, I did that, this, this belongs to me, the I and me words uh, are an internal, uh, an outside expression of an internal fact that uh, you have a center of personality called the ego that organizes perceptions from both the external world, I see, I can see television cameras around me and all that stuff, um, and the inner world. And um, I'm screening lots of things out right now, um, including the touch of the seat that I'm sitting on, on my rear end and uh, upper legs, uh, the back of my upper legs. Uh, we all screen out stimulus, and it's uh, the ego, therefore, is the internal I or me which organizes perceptions from the external and internal worlds. And right. Steve, would you like well, to the, add? <laughs> the personality needs a way to mediate this experience of inner and outer, like we were talking about just a minute ago. Uh, and it's not actually an easy thing, it's a very, difficult thing because sort of as you just talked about uh, all of these experiences are coming from the outer world and all of these impressions and reactions and things are coming from the inner world and here's the poor ego kind of sandwiched in between the inner and outer world and trying to find some way to to mediate or be conscious to be aware of of that experience so uh, the ego is the part of us that is able to be aware and conscious of something. By right. definition, if you know it, if you're aware of, your, of experiencing it, then you're having an ego experience as opposed to other kinds of experiences. Yeah, and that gets as simple as I'm hungry, as um, I'm hungry, and that's an inner well, experience. Well, but hunger starts right as, as an instinct. That's right. As a physical sensation. Uh, and you know, there are people who are not aware that they're hungry at all. Or even when you're doing something and you're really busy during the day or like that, y your ego is not aware that you're That's hungry. Right. You it, don't, it. it only comes l later. Right. See, see what I mean? Or you, or you have the feeling you have to go to the bathroom or you have a bad emotion like well, you're scared. Or feelings. Or right. There are people who, well, all of us at some time or another are absolutely unaware of, of what we're feeling in, in a given situation. Right. That's because it's not connected to, to the ego and then we'll go home and three or four hours later all, all of a sudden we we'll realize hey I'm angry about that that right. now it's just hit the ego yes. now it's just come into consciousness right right so um, the ego is also the decision maker so I mean we all have to make decisions about things that's this whole thing about Jung's perception and uh, judgment that's that's in in the typology it's one thing to have all these perceptions, and if you're a perceptive person, you have a million perceptions. You have every to do, moment. You every, have, moment. every moment. <laughs> you have to do something about that at some point, and the, the ego is the one that makes the conscious decisions that, that we make in, in the world. Our other parts of our personality make decisions for us, too, right. but that, then that feels like something unexpected happened, or it feels like, well, I just said I wasn't going to do it, and I just did it. Or you're in an addiction situation, and the ego wants to, you know, you want to stop. You want to not do a, right. something destructive. That's the ego. I, I want not to do it. And I would, I would like also to make a distinction between a decision and a value judgment. Because when Jung, when Jung actually talks about uh, the feeling function, or feelings, feelings is a real tough word in English because it means everything. It means intuitions. Right. It means I've got a hunch. It means I can feel this chair that I'm sitting in. Uh, I, I, can, I, can, I can feel my physical body being sick or whatever. I feel sick, for example. Well, Jung said that the way to think about feeling is, uh, is something agreeable or not agreeable? Right. Is for something it's... cold or warm? Is, is it something, yes, I'm into this, no, I'm not, n not into this. Those are all feeling yeah. kind of things. Well, that... The decision of the ego is, okay, I know that I'm not into this right now. Do I go on with this? Do I not right. go on with this? 
I, I see, I see value I, judgments uh, uh, backing right into the pleasure pain principle from Freud. I like it, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I accept it, I don't accept it. I, 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 uh, but you see how that goes on by itself? There are people, and there are times in all of our lives when we don't know if we like it or don't like it. That's because it hasn't been connected to, to the ego yet. Okay, great. And it makes it a lot harder to make a decision, doesn't Good. it? Yeah.